Good morning everyone and welcome to worship on this Thursday the 1st of December. Today we remember Nicholas Ferrer, the 17th century Anglican deacon and well-travelled scholar. Eventually he settled with his extended family in the impoverished village of Little Gidding in Huntingdonshire, where they pioneered community living and renewal of rural life in this neglected area while living in a way that was marked by humble prayer and service to the poor. In this first week of Advent, the shadow of death and judgment is penetrated by the glorious light of God's love, and it's shown in a life dedicated to everyday holiness. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence that we may behold your power and glory. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 42 like as the heart desireth the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come to appear before the presence of God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while daily they say unto me, Where is now thy God? Now, when I think thereupon, I pour my heart out by myself, for I went with the multitude, and brought them forth into the house of God, into the voice of praise and thanksgiving, among such as keep holy day. Why art thou so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? Put thy trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks for the help of his countenance. My God, my soul is vexed within me, therefore I will remember thee concerning the land of Jordan, and the little hill of Hermon. The Lord hath granted his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night season did I sing of him and make my prayer unto the God of my life. Why art thou so vexed, O my soul, and why art thou so disquieted within me? O put thy trust in God, for I will yet thank him, which is the help of my countenance and my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Creator God, whose life-giving Spirit wells up with streams of living water, sustain those whose spirits are heavy and whose wells have run dry, through Jesus Christ, the rock of our salvation. Amen. A reading from the Revelation to John, chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See! The home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the polluted, the murderers, the fornicators, the sorcerers, the adulterers, and all liars, 
Their place will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulphur, which is the second death. Then one of the angels who had the seven bowls full of the seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. It has the glory of God and radiance like a very rare jewel, like jasper, clear as crystal. It has a great high wall with twelve gates, and the gates twelve angels, and on the gates are inscribed the names of the twelve tribes of the Israelites, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, and on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city has twelve foundations, and on them are the twelve names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's excerpt from the penultimate chapter of John's Revelations is very familiar, as it gets used at Eastertide, Remembrance Tide, and sometimes at funerals too. This vision of the end of time when all is said and done is not a return to the natural simplicity of a paradise garden, but an utterly beautiful city fit for all people to dwell in, peace, freedom and equality. Beyond the ruins of a world despoiled by human sin and evil doing, a new society, a new community comes into being, devised not by urban planners, each with their own ideas of earthly utopia, but a city which comes from above and beyond, the perfect blend of natural and built environments where the design and aesthetics are based on harmony and well-being for all inhabitants. Not just a place of healing and convalescence where those afflicted by the trials and tribulations of a fallen world may be consoled, but a place where everyone can thrive and enjoy fullness of life. A strategic master plan for human society is thus unveiled. Not a place where anyone who refuses to renounce evil doing and rebellion against God can ever feel at home, for they are stuck with the torment they bring upon themselves, resisting life-giving change, refusing the last chance unconditionally offered. Oddly, this vision is then repeated, but slightly differently. An angel carries the visionary to a heavenly perspective on the descending new Jerusalem to reveal its beauty from another, more spiritual angle altogether. The gemstones that are mentioned in the description of the architecture of the city represent all the highest qualities of the created order, formed together into a sacred space fit for God to be worshipped on earth as in heaven. No longer do sacred and secular domains need quarantining from each other. Wherever there are people, God is present. And in their encounter with him face to face, nothing but worship is possible or worthwhile. Being fully human is expressed supremely in adoration and contemplation of the eternal God. It's now Advent, the countdown to Christmas, when we reflect on our mortality and accountability for ourselves before God, and the risk of unrepentance and the promise of eternal glory that we glimpse through the imagination of John, the visionary pastor. All this while we're getting ready for the festive season, planning, shopping, cooking, sending greetings, Grateful not to be hemmed in by pandemic restrictions this year. Why we rush around and despair of getting everything right, let's not forget that higher perspective that John offers on all that is yet to come in God's good time. Now it is time to awake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. 
Gracious God, we give you thanks for all that is good and gracious in our lives. We pray for the coming of peace, justice and reconciliation, for the relief of the oppressed and respect for human rights for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks for human skill and creativity, for all that reveals your beauty. We ask you to bless this local community and all peoples in their daily life and work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, O oh Lord, those who serve by seeking to restore community life in places broken by violence and poverty, and those whose vision is to build new communities empowered by faith, hope and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember, O oh Lord, the young and aged. Bless all families and those who live alone especially those who suffer in their loneliness. May they know the consolation of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Gracious God, you gently drew the deacon Nicholas to your service, and let him hear the calling of your love. May we who venerate his memory be constant in prayer, steadfast in hope, and rejoice in simplicity of heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May Christ the Lord, when he appears, find us ready, watching and waiting. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus, come.